kind of have not be relatives and men be why to hushka or be me huh hope everyone's doing well today um thanks again for stopping by the channel um as always i uh, greatly appreciate it my love to the relatives um just wanted to uh talk a little bit again about um the uh information that I bring to uh, everyone. A um, couple things. Um, so a lot of this information that I'm reading, um, again, is on the uh, freeafricanamericans.com website. Um, we all realize that um, that's not what we were called during the time frame of these families. Um, we all understand that. Um, we all understand that. We overstand it, all of it, right? Um, this uh, information, um, you know, I, I didn't write it. Um, like I keep telling everyone, uh, I'm, I'm just here to help bring the information forward to you if you've never seen it before. Um, I'm here to give you uh, some hints, um, some tools to help you with your uh, genealogy searches. Um, so again, um, I didn't write this. Um, I'm reading straight from the information that's presented um, on both the uh, Maryland Delaware side um, as you can see there is uh, sources for this information um, how it was compiled okay so uh, we're gonna look at it today um, just you know to to make this clear all right so this is the Delaware sources, okay? And um, as you can see here, it says the manuscript and microfilm manuscript documents, okay? And as you start to go down this, um, you can see a lot of this is uh, county records, court dockets, uh, the years of these records and dockets, and the microfilm reels that they come from okay so um, we see the Sussex County court record 1680 to 1699 the microfilm and the real number so if uh, you know anytime you know anyone's interested you know these things can be found in these you know these places where it's telling you, you know, the, the microfilm, the, the court records, the church records. Um, I mean, these, these are the sources, uh, you know, so I, I'm not really sure what else to say about it, but um, this is where the information that's presented on the family histories comes from. You got to keep in mind back, back in, uh, you know, the 16, 1700s, um, you know, there were a lot of people going to court for all kinds of different reasons because, you know, they always wanted to take people to court or that was, you know, your recourse to um, getting things done. Um, but, uh, again, I'm just, you know, kind of scrolling through this here. This is the court records um, from the counties in Delaware, um, the microfilm records, the judgment records, the certificates of freedom, uh, court proceedings, criminal court cases, um, you know, all that's here. So let's go back real quick. 
Um, so yeah, so again, that was uh, Delaware's information, where they get it from, and you got Maryland, okay? So let's go over to the Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina side. Again, um, you got these sources, okay? These are also broken up into the counties. Um, you got records, record of deed books. Um, you got court minutes. Again, you got all the counties um, where uh, the families listed. Um, not only that, um, you guys have also seen me click on the links um, to uh, some of the Fold 3 accounts where you can actually see um, the uh, military records of some of these people who were in the revolution. Um, you can also see some of the court records for um, laws and acts that were passed um, during this time frame. Um, you know, again, none of that information is my own personal opinion. Um, it's information that's been gathered off of uh, document, you know, historical documents, um, records from courthouses, from counties, uh, tax list, um, you name it. Like the stuff isn't hidden. Like we we can we can go and see these things. Like we can get on to these. Um, websites and get access to them you know if we try hard enough we can we can see the actual uh you know the court minutes the tax list i mean it's it's again it's not hidden you know you gotta you gotta you gotta keep in mind that um the people who are compiling the information um you know, of course, they have they have an agenda, and they're trying to steer all this information the way they want it to. But again, you got to dodge hijacks. You have to. You got to understand. You got to understand what I'm reading, what you're reading, the information that you're seeing. Okay, I, I you know, again, this is the sources. Okay. Again, I am just reading the information. Like I told you before, I try not to put my opinion into it too much. Every once in a while, I'll chime in and say how I feel about something, but for the most part, I just read. You all know that. Anyone that's come to my channel and watch my videos, I'm reading. I'm reading the information presented in front of me. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Okay, so um, that's that. That's that portion of what I wanted to say um, as far as that's concerned. And um, so the other thing I wanted to do is uh, do uh, get back to uh, the family histories. Um, I know we've kind of gone off on some other things here lately. Um, but it's probably time to get back to, uh, you know, doing that. So, uh, again, we are back in the um, Delaware, Maryland family history. Um, and it looks like the uh, first one we're going to uh, start with is going to be the Cobble, Caldwell, Caldwell family, okay? So we see all the different spellings here. We're going to see some other different spellings as we start to read uh, into the family history here, okay? So uh, let's start. And uh, this will probably be the only family I do for this particular video, okay? All right, so we got Isabella Colville, born, say, 1706 the servant of Mr. Daniel Sherwood of St. Michael's Parish. 
Talbot County, admitted in court on November 17, 26, that, excuse me, that she had a mulatto child by a Sherwood's Negro, Negro slave Jack, on uh, September 1st, 1726. Um, the court ordered that she serve her master another six months for his trouble and then be sold for seven years. Okay. Again, here's the judgment records, the court records where you can look up this information. Okay. She was the mother of Martha, born about 1726. Then we got uh, Martin Colwell. Born, say, 1745. Um, all right. It says uh, Martha, Martha Colvell, born about 1726, said to have been the mulatto daughter of Elizabeth Colvell, but corrected to Isabel Calvo. Uh, was sold to Daniel Sherwood until the age of 31 in November 1726. And then it shows where you can see the judgment record on that as well. Um, it says she was called Martha Colvin, a mulatto woman, in November 1751, when the Talbot County Court convinced her, excuse me, convicted her of having an illegitimate child by a Negro. The court sold her for seven years and her child for 31 years for a total of 650 pounds of tobacco to uh, Joseph Dawson. Um, she was called Martha Calville in November 1753 when uh, she admitted to the same offense and was ordered to be sold for another seven years after the completion of her, ser of her service to uh, Joseph Dawson. And it shows the criminal record where you can find it. Um, Martha Caldwell was head of a Talbot County household of two other free in 1790. And it says uh, she may have been the mother of, then we have uh, Lucy Caldwell, born say 1743, a spinster living in Talbot County in August 1763. When she was convicted of having a child by a Negro, the court sold her and her child to Cornelius Daly for 4,400 pounds of tobacco and again, the criminal record that you can go and look up, okay? Talbot County, Maryland. All right, keep it moving. Um, so next we got uh, Martin Colwell, born, say, 1745, was head of a taxable free mulattoes, household of two blacks in Bay 100, Talbot County in August 1776. And it says Carruthers, uh, 1776 Census of Maryland. Then it says he may have been the father of. We got Ari, born about 1768, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on September 11th, 1809. A black woman, about 41 years of age, five feet and three quarters of an inch high, freeborn, raised in the county. All right, next we got Joseph, born about 1780. Uh, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on September 12, 1812. A mulatto man about 32 years of age, five feet seven and one quarter inches high, born free and raised in the county. Um, just a quick uh, observation. Um, Ari was described as a black woman and Joseph is being described as a mulatto man. Okay. Um, we got Jeremiah, born about 1787, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on January 29th, 1811. About 23 years of age, 5 feet 9 inches high, dark yellow complexion, was born free, raised in the county. Okay. Next, we have uh, Sally, born about 1795, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on August 21st, 1815. A black girl, Sally Caldwell, about 20 years of age, five feet and a half inches high, born free and raised in the county. 
then it shows where you can see her certificates of freedom and it's got the uh, numbers here all right next we got members of the family in delaware uh were palin head of a murder kill hundred kent county household of 10 other free in 1800 and five in 1810. Then we got Solomon, head of a Kent County household of five other free in 1800, and seven in 1810. All right, next we got Tobias, head of a uh, Kent County household of six other free in 1800, and five in 1810. Next we have Peter, head of a Newcastle County household of five other free in 1800. Um, we got another Peter, head of a Kent County, uh, Delaware household of three other free in 1800. Then we have Philip, head of a, uh, Miss Pillion, hundred, Kent County household of five other free in 1800 and three in 1810. And we got Oliver, head of a, uh, Kent County household of seven other free in 1810. Then we have Richard. Uh, head of a Kent County household of eight other free in 1800. Next, we have Prince, uh, head of a murder kill hundred, Kent County household of seven other free in 1800. Um, next is Timothy, head of a murder kill hundred, Kent County household of five other free in 1800. Next, we have Stephen. Head of a St. Jones hundred, Kent County household of five other free in 1800. Then we have Joseph, head of a St. Jones hundred, Kent County household of four other free in 1800. And last, uh, Anthony, head of a murder kill hundred, Kent County household of four other free in 1800. All right, relatives. So that was the. Um, Caldwell, Caldwell, Caldwell family. So um, we did see some various spellings of the name, um, but we did get some good information in here. Um, we got uh, the kids' names, uh, dates of birth, um, parents' names, uh, the county that they lived in, and then we even got uh, some of the Delaware um Calville Caldwell uh, family members as well. Okay, so uh, definitely do some digging on that if that's showing up in your ancestry. And uh, when we continue next, we will be doing the Calamon family. Um, this is a personal line of my own, and um, I will be uh, when we get back to this. I will, you know, show you my. Um, genealogy along with this to uh you know show you the connections all right so let me stop screen sharing all right relatives so um again uh i hope this uh helps everyone with their genealogy um when we come back next time uh i will be doing uh we'll be back over on the virginia north carolina south carolina side um, so, um, as always, I appreciate appreciate every single one of you taking time out to uh, check out the videos. Um, again, your support means a lot to me, and uh, you know I'm going to keep keep doing this. Um, so it's it's, like, it's just like that. Period. All right, relatives. So, um, as I always say, I will see everyone next time. Um, take care. One love.